من المظلومين لا سيما بقية الله الحجة ابن الحسن فداه أرواح العالمين صلى الله عليك يا مولاي وابن مولاي يا أبا عبد الله وعلى المستشهدين بين يديك والسبايا من آل بيتك لعن الله الظالمين لكم من الأولين والآخرين ما خاب من تمسك بكم وأمنا من لجأ إليكم يا رحمة الله الواسعة ويا باب نجاة الأمة ويا عبرة كل مؤمن ومؤمنة غريب يا مظلوم كربلاء <تصفيق> يا ليتنا كنا معكم سادتي فنفوز والله فوزا عظيما كيف يصحو بما تقول اللواحي من سقته الهموم أن كدراحي كيف تهنيني الحياة وقلبي بعد قتل الطفوف دام الجراحي بأبي من شرى لقاء حسين السلام عليكم يا أصحاب أبيه عبد الله بأبي من شرع لقاء حسين بفراق النفوس والأرواح وقفوا وقفوا أو يدرؤون عن آه النبال بالوجوه الصباحي بأبي اللابس حمر الثياب هي طرزتهن سافيات الرماية بأبي الوارد حوض المنايا يوم يذيد عن الفرات المبايا يا والله قضوا حق العليهم دون الخيام 
يا مولا خلوا خوات حسين تنضاء لما طاح وتفايض منهم الهام هوا ومثل نجم السماء من خال لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم إنا لله وإنا إليه راجعون قال مولانا وسيدنا أبو عبد الله الحسين سلام الله عليه ألا من كان باذلا فينا مهجته فليرحل معنا فإني راحل غدا وإني لا أرى الموت إلا سعادة ولا الحياة مع الظالمين إلا برهما to hasten the reappearance of our beloved Imam Al-Imam Al-Mahdi please recite aloud salawat ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad <coughs> Because Imam al Hussein alayhi abul salatu was salam represents Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he will act as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants him to act in his behalf. What I mean by this word? When we go to the Quran, we see that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sometimes considers the actions of his prophets as his actions, where and when, when they represent Almighty Allah. They don't represent Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when they talk to their families, to the wives, to the kids, when they sleep, when they eat, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't eat. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't sleep. لا تأخذه سنة ولا نوم. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't need a wife, doesn't need a kid. While prophets and their successors actually are like us. They are human beings. You say that I am a human being like you. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reveals to me. Okay? But sometimes... Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants them to do things on the on his behalf. And that's something else. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will consider Prophet's actions, his actions. And the Prophet's stances, his stances. If the Prophet prohibits someone from reaching something, it means that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is prohibiting him from reaching that thing. And Allah wants and wills to test us, to trial us. This is Almighty God's intention and decree. He wants to test us. So his actually Khalifa and the person who represents Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will do as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants. So he will actually prepare the atmosphere and the platform for us to get tested. Nothing more, nothing less. So the Imam, for instance, the commander of the faithful Ali ibn Abi Talib sallallahu alayhi won't actually force us to fight with him, won't force us to accept the haqq, won't force us <clears throat> to follow his footsteps. The Prophet wasallam won't impose Islam upon anyone. And that's why in accordance to Shia, the followers of Ahlul Bayt's jurisprudence, we cannot spread Islam through force. We don't believe in that. Why? 
Because people need to decide. This dunya is dunya. It's not hereafter. In other words, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is willing to test us. This is his decree. This is his decision. And this is dunya. And that's why he gave us the willpower. Otherwise, it would have been impossible for Almighty God's enemies to do anything wrong towards Almighty God's representatives. It would be impossible for Shimra ibn dil to kill Imam al Hussein, to Ibn Muljim and Ma'awiyah to kill Amir al Mu'min Ali ibn Abi Talib. Those who killed Lady Fatima sallallahu alayha to kill Lady Fatima sallallahu alayha. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to trial us, wants to actually test us. So Imam al Hussein alayhi salam will do whatever is needed so people can get tested. Nothing more, nothing less. He won't force people. For instance, Ubaidillah ibn Hur, the one who Imam al Hussein walked to his tent and actually told him, Come and help me. And Ubaidullah ibn Hur replied that, You know what? I left Kufa. Why? Because I didn't want to join this battle. Whether with you or against you. Imam Hussein told him, you know that I am the grandson of the Prophet. I'm offering you an opportunity to join me. To join the camp of prophets and his grandson. Just imagine that Imam Hussein walked with his foot to his tent. But he refused. And then he said... But I can do something for you. I can give you my sword and my horse. My sword is a very strong sword, sharp sword. And my horse is a very fast horse. No one can reach you if you ride that horse. Imam al Hussein replied, In bakhalta anna binafsik fala haja talana bisayfika wa farasik. If you are stingy about yourself, we don't need your sword. Do you think that your sword is stronger than Dil Fuqar? That is in the hand of Ali ibn Abi Talib, in the hand of Imam al Hussein. And do you think that Imam al Hussein needs a fast horse so he can run away from the enemy? He doesn't run away from the enemy. And that's why, just listen to this. Ahlul Bayt narrate that all the the wound that Imam al Hussein received it was in his front side of his body not in his back side of his body why? because he didn't run away from the enemy all of the swords, spheres we read that in Maqtal they arrowed him alayhi, with uh, arrows and he used to take all of those arrows with his neck, receive that, those arrows with his neck and his chest. And then, Abaydullah ibn Hur said, okay, if you don't need my sword and don't need my horse, uh, I'm suggesting something else as well. Just go and leave your family with me. And I promise you to take them back to the holy city of Medina. And if anything happens to them, I will try to protect them even with my life. Imam al Hussein again told him, if you don't want to help us, if you don't want to sacrifice yourself for us, we don't need your help. Go away. Imam al Hussein was able to lure that guy was able to force that guy. No. But he doesn't do so. Why? Why? Because Imam al-Hussein alayhi wa salam 
wants people to get tested, trialed. He only offers to them, salawatullahi wa salamu alayhi, the platform and the atmosphere that they can get tested if they actually stay on that atmosphere. Sallu ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Imam al Hussein alayhi salam told the people who used to listen to his sermon, Allah man kana badalan fina muhjata falyar halana. Those who want to sacrifice for us, let them join us. Let them join us. We're not gonna force anyone. You've heard this sermon of Imam Ali alayhi salam when he said and stated that I want actually uh, make you come to the right path by corrupting myself what did he mean by that he said I try to discipline you by preaching you didn't listen to me I tried Hard to discipline you by talking about hereafter that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will put you in fire if you hesitate from helping the haq, helping those who represent Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, successes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the only choice is left now with me is to force you to fight against Muawiyah. لكن هيهات أن أصلحكم بخراب نفسي. I'm not gonna force you. Why? Because you have to get tested. Amir al-Mu'min was able actually to change too many things if he wanted. But Allah subhanahu wa taala wants to test people. وجعلنا Allah says in the Quran. وَجَعَلْنَا بَعْضَكُمْ لِبَعْضٍ فِتْنَةً أَتَصْبِرُونَ It's in Surah Al-Furqan. We will trial some of you with some others. Would you be patient? أَتَصْبِرُونَ So Imam al Hussein gave the chance to everyone to choose between the Haq camp and the Batil camp. Prophet's camp and Satan's camp, Hashemite camp, and Umayyad camp. It's their choice. And it's my choice and your choice as well. We can be with Imam al Hussein or against him. Some might say, no, no, I'm not going to be against him. I said, no. You might say that now. But what about tomorrow? If you don't pray, if you don't fast, if you don't act in accordance to Islam, hijab, effa, and other things, dignity, how you can guarantee hereafter for you, how you can guarantee that you won't abandon the majal of Imam al-Hussein forever. You don't have any guarantee. It's my choice and your choice as well. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us the opportunity and that's why you are here. That's excellent. To attend majalis of Imam al Hussein is very good, but you have to attend majalis on a weekly basis. Why? Because we need actually to clean up the dirt of our hearts. That's why we need to listen to Quran and to sayings of prophets and their successes. It's our choice. Yeah, it's hard. We have to work, we have to study, yes. But that should be in our routine, at least weekly routine. It's our choice. Because one day, we will get tested with a hard test. When that would be, I don't know. 
You don't know. Uh, will come as a sudden. As a sudden. You have to be a good driver. Why? Maybe someone actually um, put his foot on the brake suddenly in the highway. You have to know how to deal with such situation. Otherwise, you will hit that car. That's why you need experience. That's why you're not allowed to use phone while you are driving. That's why you have to be fully alert or alerted when you drive. Why? Because otherwise you, will, you might make an accident. It's our choice. Imam al Hussein alayhi salam stood up in the front of the enemies and shouted while he knew that no one of them will respond to his call. He said, He wasn't talking to the enemy. He was talking to generations, next generations. He was talking to me and you. We can help. We can be with Imam al Hussein's camp. We can actually try to be a help for Imam al Hussein by spreading the message of Imam al Hussein alayhi salam. No one gonna force you. Especially in this country, you can leave now. You can stay away from Majalis al Hussein alayhi salam. No one gonna force you. No one can force you. You are living in a free country. But it's your choice. It's my choice. This is the opportunity that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has gave us so we can get tested. And Imam al Hussein alayhi salam, by spreading the knowledge of Allah, the knowledge of Quran, explaining the knowledge of his Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he stood up and said, Allah wa inna da'i ibn da'i qad rakaza bayna thnatayn. That person, the evil one, is putting me between choosing the death or choosing to get to be humiliated by him. And I won't actually prefer staying alive upon getting killed with dignity. Ya Ballahu Lana Dali because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't accept that for us. Wa Rasul and his Prophet. Wal Mu'minun and Aimma and those who believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa hujurun tabat and my mother, Lady Fatima, who revolted against the tyrant of his her era. The first tyrant, Allahumma al-an, awwala zaliman, zalama haqqa muhammadan wa. We know who we are cursing. This is an indication. Wa akhira tabi'a allahu ala thalik. Allahumma al-an hum, jami'aha. Oh Allah, curse all of them. My mother, Lady Fatima, won't accept that. Wa unufun hamiya, we have dignity. Do you like to die with dignity or to live while tyrants humiliating you? It's up to you. It's up to you. They didn't, most of the people didn't respond to the call of Imam al Hussein alayhi salam. And you see what we are seeing now. But some people, responded positively to the call of Imam al Hussein alayhi salam. Imam al Hussein's companions who we should learn from. They are people that we stand before their graves and tombs and we say, Assalamu alaikum ya Ansara Rasulillah. 
You didn't only help the imam of your time, but you helped the prophet. Assalamu alaikum ya ansara amir al mu'mini. You helped the commander of the faithful. Assalamu alaikum ya ansara Fatima al Zahra. You helped Lady Fatima, you helped Imam al Hassan. Assalamu alaikum ya ansara Abi Abdullah al Hussein. They mentioned that on the eve of Tasu'a, Habib ibn Mudahar was an old man. He started to crack joke with his friend. And they said, this night, okay, tomorrow we'll, like, we'll get killed. He said, yes, because of that, I'm, I'm so happy that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala favored me with the tawfiq, with the chance to help Abi Abdullah al Hussein. I'm so happy because of that. Of course I'm going to crack jokes with you, with my friend. And look at them. How brave they were. Usood al Lions of desert. Lions of jungles. They responded positively. Even when Imam al Hussein alayhi salam told them that you will be cut in pieces. There was sword, was blood, was messy, spheres, arrows. And they did not know the fear and the hearts. Why? Because they only used to say about Abdullah al Hussein. Nothing but about Abdullah al Hussein. And they responded positively to Imam al Hussein when they saw that Imam al Hussein. Is guiding them to the right path. They were able just to abandon the camp of Imam al Hussein and abandon killing him as well and to go away. But no, they didn't accept that for themselves. Even when Imam al Hussein told them, just go, just leave me, they replied, So we go back to our family or our families and tell them that we abandon our leader? That's not going to happen. Not gonna happen. Ashab al Hussein alayhum as salam learned the lessons from those who abandoned the commander of the faithful Ali ibn Abi Talib and those who abandoned Imam al Hassan al Mushtaba and those who abandoned again the commander of the faithful Ali ibn Abi Talib while he was in Medina and he called for their help to actually. Confiscate back what those tyrants have stolen from him, the successorship. They've learned, they listen very well from the history. And that's why they stood up firmly. And they helped Imam al Hussein alayhi salam. So, allow me to wrap up. Imam al Hussein doesn't force anyone. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala won't force you to do good, to pray, to fast. Probably your parents tell you that you have to pray and fast. Pray in time and fast in the month of Ramadan. But if you just leave the house, you can do whatever you want. However, put this in your mind that this dunya will not last forever. And we are getting tested. And one day sooner or later, we will end up in graves. And it is our choice to be with the camp of prophets or with the camp of desires, with the camp of following Tyrants and etc. Yes. When they wanted to go, they used to come to Imam al Hussein alayhi salam and to tell him, Oh Abba Abdullah, we are seeking your permission to go and fight the enemy. And Imam al Hussein used to give them the permission to go and fight the enemy. Two people came to Imam al Hussein. 
from the tribe of Ghaffar, Al Ghaffariyan. And they told Abu Abdullah Al Hussein, Oh, Abu Abdullah Al Hussein, we'd like to go and fight to protect you, to try to protect your family. And Imam Hussein replied, That's okay, just go. فَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ قَضَى نَحْبَهُ وَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ يَنْتَظِرُ وَمَا بَدَّلُوا تَبْدِيلًا You are going now and we will follow you. And then they started to cry. Imam Hussain looked at them and told them, إِنَّهَا وَاللَّهِ الْجَنَّةِ You will end up in heaven. Why are you crying? They said, no, we're not crying for ourselves. We're crying for you, O Hussain, because even if we get killed, in the battlefield, we won't be able to actually protect you. And that's why we are crying for you. We are crying for you. That young, Allahu Akbar, that young boy came and sought the permission of Imam al Hussein to go to the battlefield. Imam al Hussein said, No, your father was killed in the battlefield. I don't want you to get killed. Probably your mama, your mother need you. I don't know. And he replied, No, Hussein, oh my master, my mother ordered me to go and protect you and to fight and get killed before you. And he entered the battlefield, you know. When they used to enter the battlefield, they used to introduce themselves. <coughs> I am this, I am that. But look at this young boy and look at his ma'rifah and insight that he has in his heart about Imam al Hussein. He started to say, Amiri Husseinun wa ni'mal amir. Do you want to know me? I'm an anonymous person, but my leader is Hussein. سرور فؤاد البشير النذير علي وفاطمة والدا فهل تعلمون له من نظير My master is Hussein He is the grandson of the prophet The commander of the faithful Ali ibn Abi Talib is his father And lady Fatima is his mother do you know anyone who is similar to him at this point? No one is like him. He is the only grandson of the Prophet that you are intending to kill. Ah, yes. And Hur ibn Yazid in Riyahi as well was amongst those who came and probably was the first person who got killed protecting Imam al Hussein alayhi salam. He was so ashamed of what he did. He came muta'ta'a ra'asah. Allahu Akbar. He was looking at his food. Imam al Hussein told him, who are you? He said, you're asking me? I am the one who made you end up in Karbala. I'm here to repent. Do you think that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will accept my repentance? Imam al Hussein replied, of course. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will accept your repentance if you repent. And of course, he went and he was fighting the enemy until he got killed. Imam al Hussein walked to him. And he stood up next to him. And Ali al-Akbar started to say and recite, لَنَعْمَلْ حُرْ حُرَّنَ الْرِيَاحِ he actually made a poem for Hur ibn Yazid in al riyahi and Imam al Hussein told him, "Anta hurrun kama sammatka ummuk." Look at this is the person that Imam al Hussein walked to his death place and stood up next to him and praised him. And another one was one of Imam al Hussein's slave. When he went to the battlefield and he got killed and he was laying down on his last moments of his life, suddenly he felt that his cheek is warm. He opened his eye to see that Imam al Hussein is putting his face on his face. Allahu Akbar. 
Akbar, look at that moment, opening your eye and to see the face of Hussein alayhi salam on your face. He said, Man mithli, who is like me? Liara wajah al Hussein, sabta Rasulillah ala wajah. To see the face of Hussein, the grandson of the Prophet, putting the face of Hussein on his face. Allahu Akbar, how keen you are, O oh Hussein. We ask you, O oh Hussein, would like to see your face as last face to see while we are in this dunya. And you tell us, yes, you accept us as your slave, you accept us as your saving servant. Ya laytana kunna ma'akum sadati. فنفوز والله فوزا عظيما لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم